Hello everyone, welcome to another session for our ARD NABARD Phase 2 exam. And for today's topic, I've actually chosen uh, for content. So we're going to go a little bit in detail on the topic of agriculture. I've actually divided it into two parts. Uh, part one, and which, because which I couldn't cover within a video, uh, it was a huge topic. So I, I made it into two parts, all right? And my name is Hansa Nora and I've been your mentor for your NABARD ARD section. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe as well as please press the bell icon for further notifications. And if you have liked the video, please don't forget to give the thumbs up button as well. All right, so uh, let's just talk about the syllabus for this horticulture and plantation crops, all right? And the first one here is on the definition, the meaning and its branches. And I've also jotted down on some of the classifications, all right? And the agronomic, productive technology of horticulture crops and on the horticulture we have vegetables we have your fruits we have your medicinal plants we have your plantation and we also have your uh, floriculture uh, which means this, uh, basically the flowers right and we have uh, of course harvest technology value and supply chain management the last topic here is an important point so i'm just gonna highlight some of the important points that we may have high chances of coming in the exam as well right so from my perspective, which I found very important, I'm going to highlight all these important points for this uh, particular topic. Basically, we're going to divide this into two, all right, part one and part two. And um, for today's topic, I'm going to talk about till the temporary, uh, till the production technology of some of the important fruits, right? So uh, without uh, wasting any time, let's just go quickly to what this horticulture is. So the definition of horticulture can be defined as a science and a technology or the technique of production, um, processing, merchandising of the fruits, vegetables, flowers, spices, plantation, medicinal, and aromatic plants. So these are the categories which come under horticulture, which is fruits, vegetable, flowers, spice, plantation, medicinal, as well as aromatic plants, all right? Okay, so um, let's go to what this, where this horticulture has been derived from. So horticulture is basically derived from the Latin word, all right? two latin words hortus which means garden and cultura which means cultivation so basically it means cultivation of the garden or a garden cultivation all right the father of horticulture is l h bailey and we have another father of horticulture which was in india which is m h mary buddha all right so uh, let's go to the branches of horticulture as horticulture is also a branch on the agriculture we can further divide, subdivide this horticulture into various branches. We have about like eight to nine branches. So let's just talk about all of these, what branches are these, all right? The first one here is pomology. Pomology refers to the cultivation or the science which deals with the production and cultivation of the fruit crops. Floriculture here, it refers to the cultivation of flower crops, plantation crops, or with, uh, with, which refers to the cultivation and production of tea, coffee, uh, coconut, aeroconut, rubber, um, cashew nuts, all of these will come under your plantation crops. Spice crops, which refers to the cultivation of spices uh, like cardamom, pepper, nutmeg, and medicinal and aromatic, which deals with um, medicinal and aromatic which has a medicinal purpose or which can be used as an aromatic crop, so right? And post-harvest technology here, it deals with the post-harvest handling, the grading, packaging, storage, processing, value addition, marketing of these horticulture crops, so right? And oleoriculture, oleoriculture, it deals with the cultivation or production of vegetables. Plant pr propagation, it deals with the propagation of plants. I think we've already covered this topic in a previous live session. All right, so we won't be going in detail on the plant propagation anymore. Okay, so scope of horticulture. So there are basically four main scopes of horticulture. The first one is the incentive for farmers, all right? So the incentive for farmers is basically on in, uh, in terms of money, uh, the net return of these horticulture crops is actually higher and per unit production all right so in this per unit production they have a so def uh, definitely they're gonna have a higher ex they have a higher export potential and they also have a high value addition right so adaptability adaptability can be grown in a wide range of environmental conditions be it from the climate as well as the soil 
family grown in like a wide range of climate, uh, family conditions such as from the temperate regions, from the temperate regions, uh, from tropical, from the subtropical regions as well. So um, other than that, we can be grown under this uh, humid, uh, humid conditions, under the frost conditions, under the higher chilling area conditions, uh, under the rocky mountain conditions. So likewise in soil as well, we can be grown in saffron ranging from sandy soils to loamy soils, from black soil to alluvial soils to rocky mountains. It can be grown in a way of variety. Um, we have a necessity. Growing a horticulture cross is a necessity in our country because not only does it give uh, it has a high nutritional value and it's the to meet the nutritional requirements of the people in the country, it's essential for us to grow these horticulture crops. So without these horticulture crops, from where we'll be getting our vitamins and the minerals, right? And in the same way, like in in the country like India, where a lot of min, uh, a lot of nutritional value and the nutritional requirements come from vegetables, as well as a lot of people are vegetarian, they support the whole diet and the nutritional diet on these or fruits and vegetables only, right? So in that way, it's a necessity for us to grow the horticulture crops. Since the demand is high, so this, there's a huge scope for the horticulture industries. Other than that, it can also add to the processing values as well as the, um, it can also generate income for the people. A good quality and a good stable land is needed for these agriculture crops. But on the other hand, these horticulture crops can be grown in areas where the, they don't really need a good stable land as well. So it can be grown in the mountains or anywhere. For example, we can just grow a hardy uh, horticulture plants or an aromatic or medicinal plants in any of those areas where uh, it's impossible for the to grow this agriculture crops. Export value. Uh, horticulture crops has a very high export value. As if you can talk about this per, uh, uh, certain uh, crops or the fruit trees like mango, bananas, lychee, guava, all of these have a high export value. Uh, and other than that, we have um, roses, we have jasmine, marigold, rings, all we have very high export value. Other than that, we have uh, potatoes, onions, tomatoes, uh, as well as the spices, tea and coffee as well. Uh, all these come together and these are, they constitute a high, huge basket of um, export value. So in, in such a way, it has a better export value than the, um, although it's perishable, uh, it's a perishable, it's highly perishable, but the export value for this is pretty high and it's higher than the uh, agricultural crops. So these are some of the um, highlights on the scope and importance of horticulture crops. So uh, let's go to our classification of these horticulture crops, classification of horticulture crops. This can be basically uh, divided into few classifications. I've just jotted down very few uh, classifications here. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about the uh, climate. So the classification based on climate. Uh, based on climate, it can be divided into three subcategories. Uh, the first one here is temperate fruits or crops, tropical fruits or crops, and we have subtropical fruits. So temperate uh, uh, fruits or the crops, they grow in a range of, uh, they need low temperature, all right? And for example, uh, they need a chilling, uh, they need a low temperature and a chilling or requirement for the normal growth and development. And some, uh, if we're gonna talk about vegetables, I'm just gonna give you some examples would be uh, your coal crops, and what will come under your cool crops? You, under your cool crops, uh, we're gonna get some cabbage. We have some. We have cauliflower. We have your um, broccoli, snow coals, rather uh, all these will come under you know uh, cool crops. As well as we have uh, potatoes are also under the separate fruit, uh, crops as well. Um, we have onions. We have um, radish, carrots. All of these will come under peas as well. It can come under your temperate fruits or crops. And your tropical crops, tropical crops are the fruits they need a temp higher temperature and a humid condition. So they cannot withstand low temperature or frost, right? So these uh, fruits or the crops that actually can come, for example, okay, before going to tropical crops, I'm just gonna give an example of your, of your temperate fruits. 
For example, when it uh, temperate fruits would be uh, your apple, um, pear, pl peach, plum, apricot, and all the nuts like almond, pecan nut, uh, all of that will come. Walnuts, all of that, kiwi, etc., etc. All of these will come under your temperate fruit. Then your tropical fruit, tropical fruit uh, would come under mango, papaya, uh, cashews. We have your bananas, pineapples, and coconut. These will come under your tropical fruits, as well as your tropical uh, and subtropical uh, vegetables or crops can come under like tomatoes, um, tomatoes, brinjal, brinjal, chili, pumpkin, basically all the cucurbits, cucurbits, crops on the cucurbits family would be your cucumber, pumpkin, bitter gourd, bottle gourd, rich gourd, all of that will come under your cucurbit daisy family, right? And so the uh, the difference is low temperate fruit, low temperature, tropical fruit, uh, higher temperature, and they can withstand frost. And subtropical fruits, subtropical fruits are uh, in between the temperate and the tropical fruits. So they can be either uh, deciduous or evergreen. So temperate fruits are mostly a deciduous fruit, uh, deciduous trees, and tropical fruits are evergreen. All right. So this subtropical. Can be basic, uh, can be your evergreen as well as your deciduous. For example, uh, example of subtropical fruits would be your um, lychee, your bale, your citrus will also come under that. Your grape, um, pomegranate, fig, um, guava. All of these crops come under these uh, subtropical fruits. Right. So I hope this is clear. Let's just go move on to our next slide. So our next slide is according. Uh, to the lifespan of the plants. So according to the life or the base on the lifespan of the plants, it can be further divided into three categories. The first one here is animal, second is biennial, and third one is perennial. So animals, these are also known as a seasonal and it's mostly um, under the flower crops or the, on the floriculture, okay? And the example for this would be your flocks, uh, marigolds, we have um, uh, sweet williams, we have antirrhinium, all these will come under these animals, okay? And these, uh, what are these animals? These are plants that live for only one season or less than a season, right? Remember that and vinyl, example for vinyl would be uh, um, onions and cabbages, right? So basically here in vinyls we have, it requires at least a two year or at least two growing season for it to complete its life cycle. For example, in the first season, suppose if you plant the seed, then it's gonna uh, go on till the vegetative growth. And in the second season, it's gonna complete its uh, reproductive growth and development. So that's about uh, vinyl. And perennial, perennial can be examples are given here are roses, tuberoses, chrysanthemum. Perennial, these are any plant that lives for more than two years, can be considered as perennial. Uh, perennials are mostly uh, in your fruit trees, all right? And so examples from perennials would be any, simply any fruit trees. For here, I've just simply given a mango and citrus, right? And let's go to our uh, third classification here is based on the stem. It can be also based on its growing habit. So it can be divided again in three categories. The first one is herbs, second is shrubs and trees. Herbs are basically um, plants which can be grow uh, which are very short. So these are plants which are really short and these are non-woody. And shrubs here, these are woody. Right, and they would attain a height about six meter to twelve meter. All right, so these can come under your shrubs. For example, a tomato can also be a shrub because it can grow up to a height, huge height. Jasmine can also, or another example would be your bougainvillea as well, and jasmine as well. These can be considered as a shrub. Right, and trees. Trees are also woody. They usually have a thick trunk. Trunk can also be known as the main stem right so these are thick these are woody thick woody plants which have which can have a several branches from its main trunk or the main stem and the height is above 12 or 10 meter 10 to 12 meter in height 
So these are some of the basic uh, differences between this herb, the shrubs and the trees. Pomology, pomology, it, it deals with the science or the cultivation of fruits. So under this pomology, uh, the fruit trees are mostly grown in orchards for commercial cultivation or production. So for this, we have different types of planting systems. So basically, there are six main planting systems. The first one here is square system. All right, so square system is one of the most simplest and the most easiest methods of planting system or layout where uh, the plant or the trees are grown in each corner of a square and the spacing is also the same between the row to row and the plant to plant All right and here if we go to here we have a rectangular system All right and this rectangle system is the same as your square system the diff only difference is the spacing between the uh here the plant to plant Suppose, for example, if the plant to plant spacing is 2 meters, then the row to row spacing would be 3 meter. So, which makes a layout of, a, of rectangular shape, which gives a rectangular shape to it. And in the same way, the, uh, the crops or the trees would be grown in corner, each corner here, in this manner, all right? And um, these are, these are two methods are one of the most common methods of planting systems and let's go to our third system here our third system here is a hexagonal system and hexagonal system basically we just divide it into two we have a two equilateral triangles all right and these can be uh for example here suppose this is an, another triangle and another triangle here so this can be your tree in plants or the six plants that can be grown and which will form into a hexagonal system and if you repeat it it's going to form into a complete hexagonal system All right so this hexagonal system they basically they can uh, attain about uh, say 15 percent more than the square system All right so here let's go to a fourth one quinta system Here, it's a bit the same like the square system. The only difference is that we grow a filler plant right in the middle. And here we can uh, have, say, about 1.5 to 2 times the uh, density of the square system, all right? And some of the examples of the filler plants can be your papaya, your um, guava, bananas can, also, can make a really good filler plant. And a third one, and, and our fifth one here is on your triangular system and triangular system let me just tell you a uh, number it so that it'll be much more easier for you all to understand suppose this plant here it's number one this is number two three we have four five six and seven so these are, the, I've just given the numbering for the plants so that it'll be much more easier. So this number two, fourth, and the sixth one, it's even numbers are kept, are grown in a, a bit distant, far away from the number one and the number three. Third plant, which may, gives a vision of a triangular system. For example, if you grew the plant here, then a little further in between, we're going to grow this another plant or another tree in between the rows all right and in the last one here is our contour our contour system here is mostly used in the hills or an undulated topography and here the planning layout would is the same as a rectangular or a square system the only difference here is that it's grown in the hilly region or in the undulated topography all right so that's mainly the so these are something on the planting systems or the layout for the orchard for the fruit trees. So let's go to our first crop. Our first crop is on mango. This is one of the most important fruit crops in India as India is the largest producer of mango. Scientific name is Mangifera indica. It belongs to the family of Anarchidaceae and we have some ten, certain varieties that I've given here. We have Alfonso, we have uh, Bangalapali, we have Rotapuri, Nilam, Bangalora, and we have Amarapali as well. Right, so, and Amarapali is a high density um, 
plant. Uh, it's used for high density planting, right? Remember that this is very important. And we have here we have soil climate. Soil climate it needs a red, a, a loamy soil with a good drainage, and preferably the pH is about six point five to eight. And the season of planting this is from July to December. And this here next point is very important. This the propagation is through approach, uh, softwood and apicotal grafting, right? And the spacing, basically in mango spacing, we have three categories. The first one is the commercial or the conventional system of planting. So seven to eight meter in either way, it means in row to row and plant to plant distance are the same. This can be from seven to 10 meter. For high density planting, we'll be using about five meter into five plant to plant row to row. And the capacity would be 400 or the dense capacity or the density would be 400 plants per hectare. And we have the third one here, we have a double hedge row system and where we adopt a 5 into 5 meter within the double rows and 10 meter between the successive double row. And we can attain or the, the density or the capacity of about 266 plants per hectare. So guys, remember this uh, three types of spacing is very important for mango, propagation is important as well as its varieties are also important, right? And for growth regulators, it's used, for growth regulators, we use NAA, which is also um, derived from opsins, which are used for food ripening or the food return, to increase the food reten retention. No, not, sorry, not for the food ripening, but for the food retention or the food dropping, right? And um, pests, some of the important pests for leaf are leaf galls and aphids, flower webber, stem borer, and shoot borer. Diseases, important diseases here are powdery mildew and we have a sooty mold. The harvest season is mostly from March to June. All right, and um, another uh, important deficiency, uh, deficiency uh, thing would be your internal tip burn. So these are some of the uh, important uh, deficiencies, deficiencies of uh, mango, which is caused by boron, right? Foreign deficiency. So these are something important points about uh, mango. I try to take a maybe you can uh, pause the screen and you can take the screenshot as well of these, all right? As I'm explaining it to you. And the second one here we have a banana. Banana is the scientific name of banana. It's Musa species and it belongs to the family Musaceae. All right. So um, we have three types of varieties, mainly cultivars. The first one is for the desert, and we have a great name. We have Robusta, Dwarf, Cavendish, West Pali, Puvan, Ningren, Red Banana. These are very important varieties of banana. So for culinary purpose, we have Montan, we have Nandran, we have Ash Montan, we have Chakya. Hill, we have Virupakshi, we have Red Bananas and London. All right. And for the soil and the climate, it needs a well-drained loamy soil, which is the most suitable for banana. And alkaline and sal saline soil, they should be completely avoided. The seasons of planting, we have four types. For one is wetlands, second is garden lands, we have Padubai lands, and we have the banana, right? And for wetlands, the season of planting is from February to April. Uh, for example, we have certain uh, varieties under this as well. We have Puvan, we have Rastali, Montan, we have Karpura Valley, and May Puvan, all right? And April and May, we grow Nandrin and Robusta. Garden plants January to February and November to December. These are the good or the ideal time for growing for the garden land purpose. And for Dubai lands, we have January to February and August to September. Hill bananas, we have April to May, which is in the lower Palani Hills, and June to August in Siru Malai. Right, so uh, bananas, these are propagated through sword suckers. Right, so here I've just given simply the spacing. So basically you just have to plant three uh, suckers which are in a pit at a spacing of 1.8 into 3.6, which will give you about 4,600 plants per hectare, which is only for Cavendish, remember that, and two meter into three meter for Nandrin, and which, which will accommodate about 5,000 plants per hectare. Some of the important uh, disease of uh, banana is bunchy top, uh, it is a serious disease of banana, which is usually caused by the banana, which is transmitted or the vector for this is 
banana aphid. Another few uh, examples of a very important diseases would be cigatoka leaf spot as well as the panama uh, disease of banana. Right again here for banana, India is also the highest producer. India is again the highest producer for banana and the highest producer in India would be Tamil Nadu following we have Gujarat and we have Maharashtra. So these are some of the important um, top three states for the production, highest production of banana in this country. Right, so let's go to our next slide we have here. We are going to talk about citrus. Citrus, we have different types of citruses in the world. And the first one here is, I think I've discussed this before as well. So let me just discuss it again. We have citrus maxima, which is also known as pumelo. Citrus reticulata, mandarin, citrus medica, citron. It's very important to know the sundry names of these as well, okay? Um, initial hybrids, we have uh, sweet orange, which is citrus sinensis, sour orange, citrus orangium. We have rough lemon, which is citrus jambiri. We have a second generation hybrid, which, uh, where we have grapefruit, which is a citrus paradisee. And we have lemon, citrus limon. We have limes, we have citrus orangish folia and latifolia. So let's just roughly discuss about these um, citrus. Mandarins, these are very susceptible to water logging, all right? And mandarins, sweet orange, uh, acid lime and grapefruit, they are highly polyembryonic, right? And they have a spacing of about, for the sweet limes, about 6 meter into 6 meter. And kino, it can be grown in high density, planting by using a choya citron as a rootstock. So this is a very important point, guys. Remember this, choya citron is a, root, a rootstock for high density planting. And we'll be using a spacing of about 1.8 meter into 1.8 meter plant to plant into woody woody tree. And the pre-harvest fruit drop is common in sweet orange. And the method or the Method, commercial method of propagation of sweet orange is tea budding or patch budding, right? And healthy line is the indicator plant for tristeza, which is a highly susceptible to this disease. It means that this line, healthy line, is susceptible to uh, this tristeza disease. So that's why it is used as an indicator plant. So this is also another important point for you guys to remember, right? Okay, so um, chida. Chakradhar is a seedless variety of sweet lime. So try to remember all these points. Uh, I've taken out some of the important points from, as I was reading, as I've just taken out some of the important points for citrus as well. So these are some of the interest, uh, important points that I could come up, come up with. I may have, I may have like missed out a lot of important points, but uh, whatever, when I went through, these are some of the important points that I saw. So uh, let's go to our fourth fruit, which is papaya. Uh, the scientific name is Carica papaya, and it belongs to the family Caricaceae. It is a polygamous plant. So polygamous plant, what is a polygamous plant? It has uh, basically three predominant sex. It has male, it has female, and a hermaphrodite. So it has three predominant sex. So that's why it's called polygamous plant. Right, so our uh, second here point here is it produces fruit throughout the year, right? And the trop it is a tropical fruit so sensitive to frost. And yellow pigment in papaya is caused by carichazanthin. This is important, right? And the milk obtained from unripe papaya is known as pepin. So this pepin is also used to extract the oil from a tuna fish. So remember that this is also important. Okay, guys. And uh, the seed weight of dietary plant is 250 to 300, 300 gram per hectare. And the dwarf variety for papaya is Pusa Nanha. Uh, it's very simple, try to remember this. And uh, papayas, these are very susceptible to water logging, right? And something the most important disease for papaya here is damping off, right? And the enzyme present in bright latex of papaya is known as. Pepsin, right? Remember, so we already found out a few terms here. We have um, pepin and we have pepsin, and we also have a caricazanthin, right? So try to remember these names, right? Papaya leaf curl virus 
quickly. The vector here is a white plate, remember? And with the ring spot virus, the vector is epit. Okay, so don't get confused between these two. Ring spot is epit, papaya leaf curl is white plate. All right? So here, our next slide is on pomegranate. All right? So pomegranate, the scientific name pomegranate is Punica granatum, which also belongs to the family Punicaceae. It's a highly drought tolerant crop. Remember this, very important. Its origin is from Persia. The pigment, the red color, is caused by anthocyanin. Remember that juice of the fruit is good for the posse. It's planted in June to July. It is ideal for planting. And this umber bahar, which is a very famous variety of uh, anar or pomegranate, it is preferred for high yielding variety. Remember, it's very special. Okay? And the wild type anar is known as daru. And bagawa is a leading variety in India, especially in Maharashtra. Right, so another important point here is propagation. Propagation it is done either by stem cutting or air layering. Air layering is also known as booty. Okay. And the pests for, for the diseases for these are anar butterfly, fruit fly, fruit sucking moth. These are some of the most important and common pests of pomegranate. And diseases, it is caused by bacterial blight. And disorders, we have food cracking, right? So, and it is mostly due to the deficiency of calcium, boron, and potassium, and as well as irregular irrigation. Okay, let's go to our sixth crop, which is guava, which is caused by cedium guajava. And the family, it belongs to Myrtaceae. All right, and uh, guava, fun fact, it has the highest fiber content. All right, so let's just go uh, talk about it furthermore. Practice for attacking winter crop instead of rainy crop is also known as Crop regulation. So crop regulation is a very important intercultural operation in guava. It is very so remember this. It's mostly done to escape escape fruit flies, right? So fruit flies are the pests of guava, right? So it is a highly cross-pollinated crop and remember that as well. And stooling is the most important and cheapest method of guava propagation. But remember it is commercially propagated by or through anarchy, but the cheapest and the important method is stooling. So remember the differences, right? So the training system for this is often center uh, system of training. The Allahabad is very famous for guava production, as well as susceptible to alkaline as well as soil acidity. And the high density planting variety is Allahabad sapeda. Remember this as well. And the wilting is a serious problem in guava, right? And bronzing, is caused due to deficiency uh, in zinc and it was first introduced by the Portuguese in India on the 17th century, right? These are also um, sensitive to water logging and these um, guava, before going to the next slide, guava is also known as the poor man's fruit. Let's go to our next slide. Our next slide is on grape, which is Vitis vinifera. The family belongs to Vitaceae. So, um, grapes are also known as a sophisticated fruit crop. Right? And these was introduced to India from Iran and Afghanistan. Right? So, they prefer mostly about uh, like cool uh, night, short days. And um, I say about like ninety percent of the pop ninety percent of the cultivation in India is done in the peninsular region of India, right? So the ideal time for planting is about from October, and the rooted cuttings are done planted from January to February. It is a deciduous climber. Remember that it can also act as an evergreen as well as a deciduous. And the propagation is also important. It is done through hard work cuttings, right? So Thompson seedless, these is an important variety of grape. It is a, it is a seedless variety and it cl it's cloned. They occupy about 55% under the area of grape cultivation. And we have a bower training system is mostly adapted. Uh, and we have a tartaric acid is present. So uh, 
before going there, like rape, all like this training system, which is adopted by uh, very common in rape, is also known as a Niffin system. Basically, a Niffin system, right, which is broad here. Suppose this is the land, we have a pool here, right? And the vine is allowed to grow, and they are tied about here and from here. The fruiting will start, and the the branches from here will be tied here, and will be tied here. In the secondary branches, as the, as the fruit bears, it will be continued to grow, and the fruit will grow. The fruits are gonna, the berries or the fruits are gonna grow in this manner. So this is known as a nip, nipping system, right? So this is also a very common practice training system in um, uh, grapes. And uh, we have the predominant sugar in grape is fructose, important again. And the chemical for reducing fruit drop is NAA, right? Kismis belly is an outstanding cultivar for raisins. Okay, and we have tannin chicken physiological disorder is due to foreign deficiency. The red color in the grape is due to anthocyanin again. The study of wine from grapes is known as very culture, remember that. And the study of wine is known as enology, all right? Let me just write it down for you. So this is the study of wine. And there's an important term called nipping. It's a term which is very common and it's an intercultural operation which is commonly practiced in grape. The terminal buds are taken out, which is mostly done to avoid the staggering growth of the grape berries, right? So this is a term used in grapes. So that's all about grapes. Let's go to our next slide. We have here Aunla. Aunla is also known as the Indian gooseberry. And the scientific name is Amblica officinalis and it belongs to the family Euphorbiaceae. And in North India, it is propagated through patch budding, high vitamin C, making about 600 milligram per 100 gram. Banarasi, Kanchen, Chen, Shakya, Hathi Jewel are some of the important varieties of Aunla. And the fruit necrosis here is due to deficiency of boron, and the pest here is bark eating caterpillar, right? I hope it's clear. And we have a subtropical, and here I've just given Jada down some of the importance and subtropical fruits. Right, so let's just go here, talk about it. Sapota, which is also known as Chiku, it is, uh, the scientific name here is Manikahara, a cross, it belongs to the family, Sapotasi, and the origin is from tropical America, right? And jackfruit, jackfruit is also known as the poor man's food. Scientific name, jackfruit is Atrocarpus, Heterophyllus and belongs to the family Moraceae and the origin for jack and the origin for jackfruit is India. So it's basically the world's largest tree bearing fruit. The extract of jackfruit is known as jacqueline. And it is a cross pollinated. And the fun fact about it is that this jackfruit is actually pollinated through wind. Right, remember that. And there's a term for it. Uh, if you guys know the term, what is the pollination through wind called? So please drop by the comment section, right? And let's go to our another fruit here. We have a bear, which is also known as the Zephyrus Mauritiana. And the family here is a Ramnesi, right? We have next one here on mangosteen. Mangosteen is also known as the queen of chocolate, right? And these, the scientific name is Garcinia mangostan. And the origin is from Indonesia or Southeast Asia. We have avocado, which is Persia Americana. The scientific, so that's a scientific name, and its family is Lauraceae, and it belongs to the family of Central America. All right, and okay, sorry. Before that, this avocado is also known as the 21st century fruit. All right, and um, we have durian. Durian is also known as uh, the scientific name is Durio Zibetinus, and it is from originally from Malaysia. It's very popular in Indonesia as well as Malaysia. It is um, the national fruit of Indonesia and Malaysia as well. And it is the king of food in Indonesia. So we have here Lokwat. Lokwat is also known as the Japanese plum. The scientific name is Aerobotria japonica, and it belongs to South China. 
Right, so here we have persimmon. And persimmon is also known as the national food, or it is known as the ebony tree. Right, and a uh, passion fruit here. The scientific name for passion fruit is Passiflora edulis, and it is uh, it is found from or originated or native to tropical America or Brazil. All right, so let's go to our temperate fruit here quickly. Let's just discuss uh, apple. The scientific name is Malus domestica, very important, and rosaceae. It can be grown in, a red, in the red laterite soil. The soil pH should be around 5.8 to 6.2, and it can be grown from about 1200 to 3000 meters. And the planting material, one year old grafts on M77, these are the rootstocks, M779 uh, rootstock during the June to July. And the season for planting is from June to December. Spacing of about 4 to 4 meter in pits of 60 centimeter to 60 centimeter to 60 centimeter is taken. And the training system here, the training system here is usually done in the open center system, all right? And you usually prune the trees every, every year from December to January. <coughs> the plant protection part, we have the pest is woolly uh, apple aphids. These are, one, these are one of the major pests of apple. And the major sugar in apple is sorbitol. Important again, we have tongue grafting is an ideal for rootstock. Okay, there's a difference between tongue grafting is used as a propagation method for rootstock, but stooling or mound layering is a common method for propagation of apple. So this apple is uh, native to southwestern Asia and uh, the apple bowl of india if you guys know the answer please comment in the comment section so that i don't know whether you guys are aware of it so um these are mostly grown in the temperate dry temperate region so it'll be grown in the himalayan region so i think you'll have a slight idea of what the apple bowl of india is right and uh important fact we have we have certain dwarf rootstocks we have a uh, uh, clonal rootstock, we have ultra dwarf rootstock, ultra dwarf rootstock will be your M7, I'm sorry, M37, and we have your semi dwarf, semi dwarf will be your M4, M7, M106, right? And your uh, dwarf rootstock would come under M9, M9, right? So these are these dwarf rootstock, these are mostly used for high density planting, right? Let's go on pear. Pear is also known as uh, the scientific name is Paris communis. And it belongs to the family of Rosaceae again. Some of the varieties common pear is Kiefer, New Pear, Willem, and Jargonelle. So it, uh, it needs same as apple, it needs a wet latch red soil with good drainage and high organic content. Can be grown in about uh, 1,200 meter above mean sea level, and the pH is around 5.8 to 6.2. The major acid in pear is malic acid. This commercially propagated through tea budding or tongue grafting. Okay, so remember here, quince it, it is the dwarfing rootstock of pear, and the commonly used clonal rootstock is quince A. Remember this, and kefir is a well known grown uh, variety in India. So this pear is, uh, is native to um, West China. And these are native to West China, right? Basically, it is probably for the normal propagation is basically propagated from this commercially propagated through a tea budding or tongue grafting. But for this quince, it is mostly propagated through. Sorry, just give me a moment. It is mostly propagated through cuttings, right? So these are some of the important points. Uh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, when there is a, a graph incompat uh, incompatibility between this quince and the pear. We usually use there's this variety called these into stock or uh, we have this into stock known as the old home or we can use any of the hardy varieties as well which can be used as an into stock when there is in graft incompatibility. Let's go to our next crop here. It's on plum and it's the scientific name is Prunus species. It belongs to the family Rose C and the varieties varieties we have early, we have mid, we have late, we have early. Is on Rubio, we have Season Hail, Gaviota, which is from June to July, and Lady Shiro, Kelsey, and Satsuma, which is grown in July to August. The soil and climate, again, same as apple and pear, that has a lat red laterite soil with good drainage, 
the pH is also the same and which needs a lot of organic matter. Elevation is also the same and planting material one year old budded plants can be planted during June to July or October to December, right? And the planting season is mostly from June to November and the training or the pruning uh, method here, here is the um, open center system. All right, and the growing point, these are mostly tipped off at 50 to 60 centimeters to allow the side shoot to develop. And some of the uh, important, it's usually propagated through tongue grafting. All right, so uh, let me just draw what, how a tongue grafting would look like. So basically, this is a cyan, we're taking a cyan, we have a root stock. So basically, we chop off the cyan in the same way as well as we chop off the, we cut the roots off in the same way. And these two will merge together. And then we'll tie it, so these are, this is a tongue grafting. The clonal rootstock for plum is Myrobalan B, remember this, important. The dwarf rootstock is Prunus subordata, remember this, and the modified central system is mostly used in India. All right, so these are mostly, plum is mostly grown in HP, Mr. Marshall Pradesh, and Jammu and Kashmir. All right, so these are the two important uh, states where it is mostly grown, and the leading producer of plum is China. And some of the temperate fruits here are peach, which is Prunus persia, which is native to China. It is also known as a horticultural wonder of New, New Zealand. And it is usually propagated through a uh, softwood cutting or a stem cutting, right? Remember that. And we have almond. Almond is, uh, the scientific name is Prunus amygdalus. It is native to the hot regions of Western Asia, but it was introduced to Greece and West Africa in prehistory. So we have another sweet cherry, or cherry, which is known as, uh, scientific name is Prunus avium, and uh, it belongs, or it na it's native to Southeast Europe or North. West Asia. And we have apricot, prunus americana, we have originated from um, Armenia. And we have strawberries, strawberry, we have Fragaria ananasa, which is native to France. And the kiwi fruit, uh, Actinidia deliciosa, which belongs to the family Actinidaceae, and it belongs to China. We have certain nuts like pecan nut, walnut, almonds, and all the different types of nuts. So um, I have a question for you guys, so like, a, like a mini one for you all. What is the Queen and king of nuts. These are there are two different uh, crops nuts. So if you guys know the answer, please don't forget to drop by the comment, uh, drop in the comment section and please that so that when I I'm definitely gonna ask in the next session as well, right? So with that's all for today. Thank you so much. And if you've liked the video, please don't forget to uh, subscribe as well as to press the bell icon and please do share this video wherever it's within the exam so that whatever we've been discussing is going to be very beneficial I hope and so we're going to be continuing with our part two for horticulture um, and in this way we're going to slowly try to take over all the content and so that you guys will be your basics will be more clearer right and uh, we still have a, a couple of time till the exam with all the situation right now it's quite hard for us as well so um try to bear with us with however we're trying to present our uh, make our videos as well and um i would like you all to i would like to request you all to stay safe and keep on studying and um don't panic well that's all for today let's meet for the next session thank you